It's Cardinals Insider at the ballpark. Welcome inside Bush Stadium. Emily Stevens, Brett McMillan from Cardinals Insider TV, pleased to be joined by the president of baseball operations, John Mosaic. John, uh, I know you've talked about him a lot this year. Yadier Molina coming back into the organization as a special assistant. I thought it was interesting. You don't want him just to focus on catching. Uh, what's the reason for that? Well, um, I think anybody that's paid attention to Yachty's career, especially after he retired, he got into managing right away. So he went to Winter Ball uh, in Venezuela. This past year, he was also the manager of Puerto Rico for the WBC tournament, and then he's currently uh, managing a team in Puerto Rico. So he really wants to diversify his own portfolio, if you will, in terms of learning different skills. And so he really wants to start to understand like player acquisition, player valuing, and, and really how we make decisions. And so, yes, he'll have some involvement in our uh, catching throughout our system. Obviously, he'll work uh, with Wilson Contreras, but I think he wants to expand a little bit of, of what he can learn over the next year. You're already excited about that. Yes, for sure. Yachty was a veteran presence on the field when he played. Paul Goldschmidt still on the field, still playing that role uh, into the final year of his deal. Just as we kind of get to the end of contracts, and we're used to that the last couple of years, celebrating guys, um, what do you look at with Goldie? What has he brought since he came over in 19? You know, when I think back to when we made that trip, trade. At the time, we were going through a lot of different first basemen from a defensive standpoint and really struggling. He really shored that up. And you think what he's done for the other infielders, he just makes them better. And that's really his strength. Um, he's just an all-around player, really a baseball savant when it comes to understanding the game and um, you know, a special guy. I still think he's got more years of baseball left in him. So uh, I, I don't think next year is the end of the road for him. Also, a huge welcome back to Daniel Descalso. What does it mean to you to have a guy like that with so much Cardinals history? history joined the coaching staff? Well, I think it's a couple things. Um, you know, you think back to Danny's career, especially in the minor leagues, when he was coming up with John Jay and, and Alan Craig, and, and those three guys really did have an impact, not only on the 2011 team, but but down the road as well. And I think these guys understand the culture of what Cardinal baseball is. You know, they were the group of players that were just on the back end of, of, of when George Kissel was putting his fingerprints on our minor league players. And so um, a lot of the coaches that worked with them understood exactly what that language was and what that person meant to this franchise and organization. I think, you know, he understands that. And so, you know, I think Ollie was really looking for someone that could be his right hand man, that could be someone that understood our past, understands our present, but also has an eye on what we need to do in the future. And I think Danny brings that. New look to the rotation. That was a goal that you guys had stated. Sonny Gray, Lance Lynn, and Kyle Gibson. Something that I thought was interesting uh, when, when Gray was here, he said, you want to see fire every fifth day when I take the ball, or the other two guys that are joining as well. What was it like for you to kind of hear that, and as you got to know him, know that not only is he going to give you innings, good innings, but he's really going to have a little bit of that kind of rusty nail edge maybe to him? You know, I think for uh, all three of those guys, they're, they're, they had a lot of things in common that, that made this an easier decision for us to do, and, and started with one one, they all want to be in St. Louis. I mean, that's really important. You think about the free agent proxy, it really is about money. And so um, in this particular case, all three of these guys want to be here. I think they all left money on the table. That's got to make you feel good as a fan and as someone a part of the Cardinal organization. I also think when you look at last year and, and you take a look back at what went right and what went wrong, which was a lot, um, you know, that we realized we missed some people in that clubhouse. And, you know, I think when, when Albert and Yacht he left, we thought, oh, we could bridge that. But I do think we missed that. And so all three of these guys, from a cultural standpoint or a makeup standpoint, will be really strong influences in the clubhouse. And I think we did, uh, we'll need that. How much do you guys have to think about that when you're looking at potential free agents? I mean, obviously, results matter. It's a results business. But it is a people business, too. I know you all are aware of that. No, for sure. Um, obviously, our model doesn't really bake that in because it's hard to, to really quantify. But we do use it. I mean, we understand what we were missing last year, and we identified some people that we think can fill that void. And on top of that, we also think they're good performers. So you, you marry the two, and you, we hope we solve the problem that we had last year, and it can avoid this year. Recently trading Tyler O'Neill for Nick Robertson and Victor Santos. What are you excited about those two big arms? Well, I think like the, the most important thing for us was we really had to clear the deck in the outfield. Like we 
last year, I think we spent a lot of time and energy trying to figure out who should get at bats and why. And that became kind of problematic and stressful for the manager and the staff. And more importantly, um, we went into this offseason saying we had to find pitching, had to find uh, arms. And so being able to turn Tyler into two young pitchers was important. In Robertson's case, he has some big league experience. He also has um, some flexibility with him and options. So the most important thing is, is though we do think he'll be competing for a role with our, our 2024 team. And then in uh, Santos's case, he's someone that didn't pitch last year, is pitching currently in winter ball, but we're excited about how he throws. Um, you know, when he has a unique pitch profile, and I think given the fact that he's missed a year, we're going to see a little more horsepower in him in 2024. So much energy with Jordan Walker and Mason Wynn. Fun to see both of them come up, make a debut last year. Obviously, Jordan up on opening day, uh, Mason up later in the year. What do you look for from each of them as they step into their sophomore season in the major league? Well, I think in Jordan's case, I think he established himself as a, as a real threat at the play. Obviously, from a defensive standpoint, he was making adjustments, started and left, moved to right. Um, we do think he can handle the outfield position. We really do believe that. Currently working with Jose Okendo right now in Jupiter. So expectations of him to make that adjustment are are, are high, real, and I think uh, he's going to surprise a few people out there this year. And then in uh, Wynn's case, I think the biggest thing for us is obviously had we not had the season we had, he probably doesn't get to the big leagues, right? If we are actually you know, competing for a playoff spot, um, the opportunity might not have actually existed. But what we saw early on with Walker, there is a learning curve at this league, and we wanted uh, Mason to get a little exposure to that last year, and that was really the importance of bringing him up. So obviously in 2024, we're hoping that he hits the ground running and he can have that uh, you know, true opportunity to come out and perform and not have to worry about what those experiences are about. How about Yvonne Herrera? Cardinals named him Minor League Player of the Year. Really a standout season for him last year, but what are you hoping to see from him in 2024? Yeah, I think the big challenge for him is, first off, you're right, he had a great year last year. Um, I think he made you know leaps and bounds in terms of where he was from 2022. But, you know, this year it's really going to come down to giving him some opportunities. And obviously with Wilson Contreras, that's going to be a challenge for Ollie and the, and the coaching staff. But I do think it's a way to get him in games, maybe have Wilson DH from time to time. But we're certainly going to have to get him some at-bats because at his age, he's still developing and still growing. And we got to make sure he gets some playing time. Spring training's right around the corner. How will this year's spring training be different um, regarding young guys looking for new opportunities? Yeah, obviously that's what I was talking about all last year, right? And, and so there's a little change in that because now we have a much more established rotation. I think some of the younger guys are going to be like looking and fighting for innings. And so I think, I think the one thing as a fan that you should be watching for this spring is really who ends up in the bullpen because obviously there's some talented guys that aren't going to be in the rotation that maybe thought they were and so they might get redeployed into the bullpen and um, you know I think that'll be the balance that we have to work through when we're, we're in Jupiter because clearly we're also going to want to make sure that we have some guys that are getting stretched out down in Memphis so um, a lot of young pitchers aren't going to want to hear that but you know that's part of the game and obviously signing veteran starters is going to allow us to I think add a little bit more depth into our bullpen but also it's going to be a much more competitive camp for some guys. Well, Mo, thank you for your time. Happy holidays to you. Uh, congratulations on the work your group has done so far. We're excited for uh, opening day 2024. It'll be here before we know it. Thank you both. Absolutely. For Mo and Emily, I'm Brett. We'll catch you next time on Cardinals Insider at the ballpark.